Welcome to Hometown Happenings. I'm Carol McCarthy and I'm standing here at the Detroit Lakes Police Department. Today we're going to go for a ride with Sergeant Tim Agabrotten. All right, let's play Mythbusters. There's a couple of myths that uh, every year we encounter them. Uh, one myth is the fuzz busters or the radar detectors, are they illegal? And uh, the answer is no, they are not illegal. You can have a, a radar detector in your personal vehicle as you're driving along. Uh, what we don't want to see and what we sometimes bump into is uh, people trying to hide the fuzz busters. And when, from, the, from our perspective, when we're pulling them over and we see them wiggling around and and uh, stuffing stuff. You know, we don't know if they're reaching for something or if they're trying to hide something. But uh, so just leave your radar detector where it is. It's fine. Uh, another thing is the, in the summertime, especially uh, people that drive without their shoes on. I do it all the time. It is not illegal to uh, drive with your shoes and socks off. There's no problem with that. And we'll see that. We'll pull somebody over and they'll be digging around trying to get their shoes on. And uh, it's the same type of thing where we don't, uh, we don't want people messing around while we're uh, pulling them over and walking up to the car because we don't really know what they're, what they're going for. And if you feel like you're being treated like a criminal, it's, you know, don't take it personally. It's just because we don't know who you are. We don't know what you're doing. Uh, so we're, we may speak harshly to you. Another thing, don't get out of the vehicle and approach the police officer. Uh, sometimes people do that. They feel like it's a nice gesture to do, but uh, just stay in your vehicle, keep your hands up on the wheel, or you know, you don't need to put your hands up or anything like that, but uh, just uh, look at it from our perspective. You know, we like to see people's hands and, uh, you know, time to buckle up your seatbelt is before you get pulled over, not uh, when you see the police officer, then you buckle up. Buckle up before you even leave. And tasers. Uh, a couple years ago, our department was issued tasers and uh, we've had several successful tasings and I know in the uh, media when they first came out there was some uh, controversy, there's some uh, in custody deaths that uh, some people have attributed toward the taser and there has been no uh, medical documentation or anything attributing these deaths to the tasers and actually on the contrary more lives have been saved because of the tasers than, uh, than haven't been or that have been injured. And uh, what the tasers do is they shoot out about 50,000 volts. Uh, two probes come out and they stick into the shirt or clothing or skin. Um, and they deliver these volts for a period of five seconds. And after the five seconds are done, then the, we can keep pulling the trigger. But most of the people uh, have complied after that first five second. Actually, most of the tasings that I've personally done, I shut off after about three seconds uh, because it, we gain compliance. Nope, we have no quota. Actually, there's a state law prohibiting quotas. And uh, so we'll get that a lot where people will ask us or they'll tell us, you know, you're just giving me a ticket because of the quota. And we have no quota. Uh, the reason we enforce the laws are the same reasons that the laws are made. There's a reason for it. Uh, speeding, for example, a lot of our accidents are a direct result of people going too fast. And so we go out there and we enforce speeding to remind people to slow down. So it's nothing, you know, as you can see when we're driving around here at night, uh, all we're seeing is a pair of headlights coming at us and our radar. And uh, I would challenge anybody when you're out driving around at night uh, to identify how many people are in the car that you see coming at you, identify their sex, identify their race, uh, you know, and it's, so when people say that, well, you're, you're picking on me because of whatever, my last name or because of my race or because I'm a woman or, you know, it's uh, really kind of ironic because we, we can't see who we're dealing with as we're meeting them on the road uh, at night. And, uh, so it's kind of a frivolous complaint. Uh, a lot of emails get forwarded and warnings about uh, don't get, you know, if you see a vehicle pull up behind you with the lights on, 
and you're not sure it's a police officer, call the dispatcher. And, uh, all of our vehicles, our marked squad cars, have the spotlights, have the uh, red lights and blue lights, and I mean, they're decked out. Uh, I would say that if you think it's it's not legitimate, uh, certainly don't pull off on a you know a little desolate road or something. But if there's a vehicle behind you with emergency lights, uh, certainly pull over. And uh, because if you don't pull over, more police officers are going to get involved, and it just gets everybody worked up. Uh, if it is somebody like a uh, predator or somebody that that has a light uh, you know I, I haven't I've heard of some people getting pulled over by uh, fake police officers and they just have one single light up on top you know and so I, I guess those forwarded emails are okay to an extent but what I see happening is people getting very paranoid about something that uh, uh, doesn't typically happen in this part of the country and sure as soon as I say that not gonna happen <laughs> but uh, I would just say that you know let let common sense take over too. that you know if you're in Detroit Lakes and uh, you're downtown and uh, there's a, a emergency vehicle behind you pull over and stop uh, if they're not pulling you over they're gonna continue on and uh, a lot of times uh, people won't pull over right away, and I've had people say, well, I thought you were an ambulance. And it doesn't matter if you're an ambulance or a fire truck. If there's emergency red lights behind you, please pull over and stop. You know, when we're patrolling around at night, uh, right now there's uh, two patrol cars in the city of Detroit Lakes, so we're driving around taking calls, and uh, we get a lot of help from the sheriff's department and state patrol and everything. But it's, if you look at the map of the city of Detroit Lakes and the, the uh, area that we have to cover, we really makes you realize that we rely heavily on the public for their eyes and ears. You know, if, if the dog uh, that lives next door starts barking and doesn't normally bark at night, or if your neighbor's motion light goes on, uh, don't wait until the next day or the next week, you know, when you see a police officer. Uh, there's no such thing as, uh, bugging us all we're doing is we're out here patrolling right now and waiting for people to call in and we're looking for stuff too and a lot of people feel that uh, they're going to be bothering us or that they'll feel stupid if they call and there's nothing out there we would much rather have somebody call us and we get to the scene and uh, there is nothing and we'd much rather have that than somebody having to put up with their neighbor's loud party all night long and and they see us the next week and they say, where were you guys on Saturday night when my neighbors were partying till four o'clock in the morning? So don't ever hesitate uh, to call in on anything. One of the things that we deal with a lot are uh, drunk drivers and with the cell phones now, everybody's got a cell phone and you know that just helps us out being the eyes and ears out on the roads too. And uh, some people will ask me, well, I hate to, call in a guy on a, for drunk driving because I don't know for sure if he's drunk and that all relates back to the same thing in your neighborhood if you if you're driving along on the highway and you see somebody weaving back and forth or they speed up and they slow down and just driving erratically uh, certainly give us a call we'll, we'll try to get them pulled over and uh, sometimes maybe it's just a, uh, somebody who's tired been on the road a while and and uh, that's just as dangerous as a drunk driver in a lot of cases. So, you know, by us pulling them over, it may wake them up or give them the uh, heads up to pull off somewhere and take a power nap. But uh, uh, again, we're out here doing what we do. And uh, anybody that can be out there helping us out by calling us in a drunk driver or a suspicious prowler or something, uh, don't don't ever feel like it's, it's bothering us because it's not. It's uh, it's something that we do and, and we'd be more than happy to investigate it. Well, that's going to wrap it up for today. Uh, my thanks to Sergeant Tim Megabrotten and the Detroit Lakes Police Department for Hometown Happenings. I'm Carol McCarthy.